Hello wonderful person, in this video we're going to be talking about something that happened once again right here on the planet Earth. Something that actually had the scientists who discovered it go... Whoa, that's insane. We're going to be talking about something that's actually underneath our feet. Something inside the actual crust of our planet. Something that we didn't really know was even there. Now you may have already guessed what it is from the title, but you may need to actually watch the rest of the video to realize how sort of insane it is. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. And so we're going to start uh, with basically the idea of what was discovered. This is actually coming from a study called Deep Carbon Observatory, where scientists for about 10 years um, used various samples around the planet, drilled deep into the ground and tried to figure out if they could actually find any life there. And as you can probably imagine, they found quite a lot of life, but they didn't really realize how much of it is out there. Turns out they discovered so many different bacteria and so much so-called carbon mass or biomass of um, different bacterial life that it redefined our understanding of not only how much life there is underneath our feet, but that it's actually most likely that there's more life underneath the ground than there is on the surface or in, in the air of our planet. In other words, they've discovered a tremendous amount of bacteria. Now, normally, if you pick up a piece of um, earth, basically any kind of soil, um, you would find in a tiny, tiny one gram of soil approximately 50 million cells of various bacteria. This could be dangerous bacteria, this could be the bacteria that are actually good for you, but it's just, you know, random amount of stuff. Normally, in water, there's about 50 times less, so if you take one milliliter of water from a lake or from an ocean, you'll find about a million bacteria in one single milliliter. So in other words, uh, we know that there's a lot of bacteria around us. As a matter of fact, pretty much everywhere you go or anywhere you stand, anywhere you find yourself on the planet Earth, no matter how hard you try to hide from it, there will be bacteria in there. But when the scientists drilled into Earth and essentially very, very deep, up to about five kilometers deep, they kept discovering more and more bacteria. As a matter of fact, a lot of it and they even found it underneath the ocean crust as deep as three kilometers below the actual crust of the ocean. So essentially we found life pretty much in locations where we never expected to find it. And when they actually compared it to samples here on, on the surface, they discovered that there was actually even more carbon mass down there. And so the estimate right now suggests that there's like 23 billion ton of material, of carbon material, of actual living organisms down there. Now, you may not actually realize how much this is, and I'm going to show you visually how much this actually is, but just to give you a comparison, if I were to take all of the humans together, and if we were to essentially combine 7.6 billion people into one single mass, you would get about 100 million ton of carbon. This is something like, let me do some math here, 200 times, approximately 200 times more in terms of mass of humans. Now let's compare it to some other uh, species and, and I guess animals. So for example, all of the domestic animals like cows, sheep and so on, if you were to combine them together, you get about seven times more than humans, so 700 million tons, but that's still way, way less than 23 billion. Even if you were to look at all of the cereal crops combined, which is essentially things that we mostly use uh, to produce food and to produce clothing and so on. If you were to combine all of this, you'd still get about 10 times less than the mass we discovered. This is about 2.3 billion tons of carbon. And this also implies that even if we look at all of the bacteria present on our planet, about a third of it lives underneath our feet, essentially inside the planet Earth. And this groundbreaking discovery also suggests that um, we have a huge chance now of finding life on Mars, or really inside Mars. As I've mentioned in one of the previous videos, we have a very, very um, strong sort of suspicion, or not really suspicion, but scientific suspicion, that um, life could survive underneath the surface of Mars. I've explained it in a lot of detail in that other video, so you can check it out on the channel. But now we also know that there's so much life underneath our own planet or underneath our own sort of surface of the planet. And this of course suggests that we could actually find it pretty much anywhere at this point. And this also means that we really underestimated life in general. We didn't really think it could survive in these conditions and it totally can and can totally thrive there. Not just survive, but actually have a blast down there underneath our feet. And this of course also means that we now need to start looking for a mission to Mars where we can maybe find something there because there's a very high chance we're going to find something. 
But this particular study also found that certain types of diamonds um, from about 600 to 700 million years ago um, actually had signs of being produced by life essentially. They were made from material that used to be living organisms, which suggests that maybe in a few hundred million years, you and I will actually become diamonds. That's pretty awesome. Our actual material inside our body will most likely turn into diamond-like formations. This study also dramatically extended the actual um, life limits for bacterial life. We now think it can survive much higher pressure, much higher temperature conditions, and essentially live and thrive in ridiculous conditions. We've also unusually discovered a huge amount of carbon that's stored right here inside the inner and outer core of our planet, and we think that up to about two-thirds of entire carbon deposit of our planet is actually inside our core. And uh, this is really, really important because we are currently trying to understand the whole carbon cycle. We're trying to understand how carbon is recycled in the atmosphere and inside the planet and how it's then reintroduced as carbon dioxide. And it's very important to understand these things because of the whole climate change that's going on right now and because we are very worried about the currently very high levels of average carbon dioxide um, on our planet. Now, we want to understand how much more of it can potentially be released and if we're in any danger of turning into another Venus, because that's really what happened on Venus. A lot of carbon escaped into the atmosphere and basically turned the planet super hot. And so all of these cool discoveries about our planet actually um, made us understand not just life on our planet better, but it helped us realize that there's a lot more carbon out there than we actually thought it was inside our planet. And a lot of it could actually come out if something happens. Like, for example, if suddenly the composition of the internal structure of our planet changes, a lot of this carbon will start escaping. If suddenly there are a lot of eruptions on our planet, a lot of this carbon will also make its way to the atmosphere. And if we actually disturb the cycle of carbon, um, unfortunately for our planet, it will start having some dramatic uh, climate changes. And even with this tiny increase in carbon um, over the past few um, decades, we've already started noticing quite a lot of dramatic climatic changes. For example, NASA has actually recently released this beautiful video that shows you the overall um, area of ice in the Arctic um, in comparison to previous years, and it does show a very sort of a worrying trend here. Even though some people want to ignore this, it's happening, people. It's really happening. But today we're not really going to be talking about the environmental changes, we're going to be really just talking about life that we've discovered underneath our feet. Now let me show you how much of it was actually found. And let's use Universe Sandbox to try to basically simulate this. Uh, we're going to use rocks to represent number or amount of stuff. Uh, this is people. This is basically humans all together in one beautiful rocky formation. It's about uh, 280 meters in radius, I think. Uh, let's just put something that you might be familiar with for a comparison. So here is the Great Pyramid of Giza. As you can see, it's not that big, but it's still pretty big. So all of the people combined are clearly bigger than the pyramid. But we want to see how much bacterial life do we actually discover underneath the surface of our planet. Like I said before, it was 23 billion um, tons of carbon, and that means... It's going to be a much bigger rock, specifically a rock that's about 1.4 kilometers in radius, significantly larger than the one uh, that people made. And once again, let's put something like a Pyramid of Giza here for a comparison, just so you can actually see what all of this looks like. So there is that little Pyramid of Giza in comparison. And if you want to take a look at Tesla, there is the Tesla car right next to it. So um, there is a tiny car. And that huge amount of material is essentially the underground bacteria we've just discovered um, in December of 2018. That's a huge amount of stuff. That's a lot of life. If this life fell onto the planet Earth, if we were to literally pick up all of this bacteria and then, well, let's actually do that. Let's pick up all of this bacteria from the ground and have all of this bacteria then fall onto the planet Earth in free fall. Um, as a kind of an asteroid and let's see what happens. So if all of this actually fell onto our planet, because it's such a large rock, um, it would actually cause a tremendous devastation. This is basically almost like the dinosaur killer, a little bit smaller than that. So there you go. That's how large the amount of stuff or carbon is that we've discovered. And that's all just bacterial life. 
it's kind of mind-blowing to be honest. And my apologies Australians if you're watching this, but rock fell on, onto your continent. Anyway, so that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. It's, it's actually a very big discovery. It's a discovery that will have such huge ramifications that um, it will most likely change how we approach astrobiology, the search for life outside of our planet. As I mentioned, Mars is going to be the first uh, target of this particular discovery, but I'm sure other moons and other planets will follow pretty quick. Because now we know bacteria can survive these insane conditions, it means that life is most likely pretty much everywhere out there. As long as it could have actually evolved there, of course. If it evolved on those objects, from the beginning it will probably be able to survive underneath. And we think that it may have happened on Mars. Hopefully in the next decade or so we'll discover that, but for now we can only speculate. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, maybe even share it with someone who likes to learn about sciences and space in general. Also, maybe consider supporting the show on Patreon because it does kind of help me a lot. See you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.